Welcome everyone to this week's Live Force Friday. So we are continuing with our character design uh, month of February challenges. Uh, every week we are giving away a prize um, for the winner. Uh, obviously the postings and the challenge themselves show up on Instagram uh, every Saturday. So tomorrow will be the last challenge for the month of February with the biggest prize attached to it, um, which we will reveal the winner of um, next Force Friday. So today was Lycanthrope, right? And uh, some people brought up this interesting question, which I hate to admit, but I didn't really consider. And that was, oh, is it supposed to only be a werewolf? And I wasn't thinking that. In my mind, I was thinking, you know, you can change from, you know, human to whatever, basically, right? So you could have been human to cat, human to werewolf, you know, to wolf, to werewolf, human to a tiger. We have a tiger that somebody sent in, a puma, right? I'm totally fine with that. Uh, if you're not in today, it could be for numerous reasons. One is just us running out of space and time. It could be that you didn't send in a clear submission for um, two designs, right? We're ramping up today in that there's two characters really that we need. We need to see the human form and the animal form. Uh, so that could have um, prohibited you from coming into to the um, into the video. Um, and then that's pretty much it. So uh, next week, without giving anything away um, or too much away, tomorrow you're gonna find out that the challenge will have three characters in it, right? So we've gone from a single character for the first two months and got more and more complex. We went to two characters with Lycanthrope. And here in the last um, challenge, we will bump up to three, okay? So, uh, so that's it. So let's say hello to... Um, our other guests and instructors. How are you guys doing? How's it going, Ratunje? Good, Mike. Uh, ready for this uh, very unique challenge winner? Yeah. Judging. <laughs> and how are you, Swenley? Yeah, same. It's been uh, in a couple of exciting weeks, you know, and I see people in the chat are excited as well. So, yeah, thank you guys for the great submissions. It's, it's awesome to see all the great work, so I can't wait. Yeah, and I, I think to jump on that, I think it's fair to say that they just keep getting better. You know, like last week was so much better than the first week, and this week is so much better again, you know? So just keep it up. You know, you guys are learning a lot within very short periods of time here, you know? Sorry about all my crazy lighting, I'm just trying to match this guy, <laughs> as you can see. American Werewolf in London. Um, all right, so let's head back to Photoshop. And let's get started. As we know, these end up running right up to the wire. Uh, again, if you like what we're doing here on this channel, please hit the subscribe button and hit the bell if you want to be notified um, about what we're doing. Um, we are going to be uh, assessing the clarity across the um, across the different submissions, right? Uh, so clarity, not only just clarity, but clarity on the assignment, right? Clarity of creativity, uh, clarity on skill, uh, clarity on the function. Like, did you have some kind of clever idea that showed up in here as well and how things work? Uh, and then clarity of force, you know, obviously, is it drawn well? Is it forceful? Is it shape design good? Uh, is it solid? Force you can almost put under the skill piece when it comes to the drawing aspect of things, right? All right, so let's get to it. Here's our first. I didn't copy over all the writing. I have to tell you, though, I, I really do appreciate that majority of you are now understanding that writing is really important. And some of you came up with some really interesting backstories, which I did read as I was grabbing these, by the way. So what's unique here from uh, Bawerki as well is that this is from a drawing in my animal drawing book. As, yeah. Oh, yeah. You wrote that there. And uh, so that was kind of fun for me, obviously, personally, to see me see you take this and morph it. Um, I really like that you drew the morph, you know, I have to say, I didn't say this was a must, but right, extra bonus points for drawing the process, right? We're talking about a lycanthrope. It would have been great to get one to three drawings in between the two designs and for us to see the metamorphosis itself, right? So uh, anything you, uh, you guys want to say, Swenley? I'll start with you. 
Uh, no, I agree with you. This is uh, great to see the transformation process, you know, bonus point for that. And also uh, very clear ideas. You know, you can see this artist is writing clearly and then it's, he's drawing his ideas or his results in, you know, clarity and just a lot of creativity going on in these drawings. You know, I would say the thing to work on, uh, of course, is a bit more uh, form, mm -hmm. you know, but in terms of creativity, this is pretty good fun ideas yeah i would agree i would say the main thing for you is skill you know it's just getting better at drawing so that's a good place to be i have to tell you i'd much rather be short on skill than short on creative right because yeah. creative's in a way harder to learn you know so it's good that you've got a creative mind and i love your presentation i like how you work this whole thing together um my only note, maybe presentation wise, no, you know what? It's fine. I was thinking of, is the order correct? But, you know, you want the person on the left. We, we normally lead from, read from left to right. So I would have to carry, you know, the human on the left and then work the whole thing down on the right. So this is fine. Um, I would say, I would agree with Swanley. It's structure and skill. Yeah. You know, it's bringing structure underneath the umbrella is skill, just more form, you know, and then learning more about anatomy and so on. But a lot of good stuff going on. Yeah. Mertenji, anything you want to add? Uh, no, I guess cover, you know, some like main points that I also want to discuss. And I just want to say mm -hmm. I like the creativity, you know. <laughs> I have attempted this uh, this pose that you have chosen for the, the final illustration. I've attempted this pose a lot. And I admit that this pose looks creepy, you know, in a way. So <laughs> uh, great job on like taking the pose and just, uh, you know, converting that to an illustration. I would just maybe say, uh, break away from reference, you know, so you're referencing something and it is in the words, right? You, you just got to refer to it and just be inspired by it a lot. And uh, again, it's like connecting back to what Mike and Swen Lee saying is, is you just got to have like more uh, skills, you know, and it's it's completely fine. You just be learning that more and more. Uh, it's better than the previous uh, submissions, you know, so that's a thumbs up. <laughs> mm -hmm. yeah. All right, on to our second one. Let's see if I can line these up here. So this is Chao Wing got Tupale. Let's put this here. You have a before and after. So I can put them both in here. Put that underneath there. So high skill, right? Obviously, like really good high skill. Um, the characters drawn well, painted well. I think the, you know, the metamorphosis also like designed well, drawn well. I love the background. I like the presentation. Um, yeah, I would say my main issue with this is that we only have a bust or a headshot of the human form. I would love to have seen the human forms costuming uh, and does it relate at all to the version of the character uh, in werewolf form, you know, like, this guy looks like he's in more casual, you know, clothing. He's not armor is my point. You know, so how does that happen? Does the arm, you know, is he putting on the armor when he's in lycanthrop form? Is it part of the metamorphosis that like the armor magically appears? Um, yeah. So the skill is here. I think I want, I want more information, clarity on function, I guess, if I were to point it towards anything, you know, uh, what about you guys? Twenly? Uh, yeah, I would agree, indeed. And uh, just to add a little bit on the skill part, you know, you have some great shapes going on here. Just keep in mind that shape comes from form, especially when you're dealing with a three-dimensional object. You know, so if you look right here, for example, we need to make sure that the next socket feels like it's built on the center line. And even if you have like the arced head, it has to be a form that fits into its proper socket, you know, same for I don't the see, if you're drawing, I don't see it. Oh, that's odd. I'm annotating. Yeah, it's weird. I don't see. Oh, there it comes. It's starting to load up now. Yeah, is it appearing? Yeah, it's starting to. Yeah, there we go. Okay. Ah, okay. Yeah, it's just delayed. Yeah. So just watch the construction, you know, here. Make sure that you have clear overlaps, like this arm is supposed to be uh, at the sides of the of the torso, you know, make sure that you keep the in mind the, the roundness 
and those shapes. You know, if you manage to combine that with your great shape designs, your drawings will be even better, you know? So that's just my two cents regarding uh, skill. Merton mm -hmm. anything? I like the, the personality of this guy, you know? <laughs> Uh, the Chinese, you know, like the Chinese werewolf, and it's like very traditional uh, subject, you know, with the lycanthrope. Um, mm -hmm. But again, it's just, I, and, and great rendering, by the way, and I really see, even in your painting, I really see the shapes, you know, that you're like made with the brush strokes, like really, really cool. Uh, just would like to see more. It's like you're presenting me a great dish, but it's not enough. So I want to eat more of it. <laughs> but now you're just like torturing me with just uh, serving less of it. <laughs> so yeah, that would be great. And uh, with that other arm, uh, I think with the right arm is uh, like the template is being the opposite. So if I just, I just observe it right now. So if I just um, see the forearm, uh, the his right arm, right, which is the screen left. So I think it's like the little bit opposite, uh, you know, towards the shape end. Uh, but I love, I love the clothing in here. Um, yeah, great, you know. <laughs> Uh, yeah, I was going to point that out even with the other arm, there's a little bit of this to this going on, you know, instead of maybe pushing the curve and the tricep side a little bit more, you know, you want to try to keep the arc going like this instead of uh, having two bounces or two forces, let's say in, in an arm, it's usually one or three. It's a very subtle force uh, rule. But uh, all in all, like I said, uh, you know, Again, I think it's really good. Your skill level is really high. I wish you had shown us more of the guy in the front end. I, I agree with Matunjay. I love the um, the expression on the guy too. I would love to have seen the rest of his body acting out this kind of facial expression and seen his costuming and and then tried to understand if that change relates somehow to the end result or not. There's just, there's not enough info, you know, which is a shame because it's, it's very well done, right? Um, okay, so this is MD Bonar, right? And the short of this is um, the drawings are both okay, but it doesn't feel creative enough. I think I like that she's wearing kind of tiger striped pants. That's kind of cool. So there's a connection there. I wish the tiger um, looked more monstrous somehow. Like it's not a perfect tiger that somehow there's some carryover from her. Usually werewolves aren't just a dog, you know, it's like a walking dog, like a walking dog, right? Depends on what movie or show you watch. Sometimes they, sometimes they change all the way, but I don't know. I don't think that's as creative as trying to get it to have some kind of, it's, uh, it's, it's like, it doesn't go all the way to that pure animal, right? There's still a little bit of human somehow in it. And it's usually in its like construction, you know? Um, and the tiger could use more depth. It's very flat, you know? Uh, I think it might just be the reference that you picked, you know, it happens to be like total profile. Um, yeah, I wish there was just more. And it would have been awesome to see transformation too, right? It feels like you got a photo of a woman, a photo of the tiger, you drew the two, added some tiger stripes on her pants and stuff and called it a day, you know? And I'd like to see more, you know? Anything you guys wanna to add to that one? Yeah, I mean, uh, the connection, you know, that uh, you can play more with the character. So let's say she could have more like fierce nails so she can attack. So basically, maybe I would say just think about the function, you know, uh, if she's like turning into where uh, turning into this like like intro character, then what she does is she's like fierce or she's like more cute. <laughs> you know, it could be anything. So you just got to give her nails if she's like more wild huntress or, you know, something like that. So I would just say maybe connection and think about the function and it would uh, really start to work if you just present, let's say a in between, uh, again, it's what Mike is saying is the transformation about it. Yeah. Um, yeah. So yeah, my two cents on that. Okay, let's move on to the next. So this is Michael AJ. Um, Michael has the unfortunate relationship to me that I know his work, as I mentioned last time. Um, and you know, my argument really here is just, I know you can do better. I think what you're being challenged with here, which is very normal, by the way, for, um, artists, especially if they're drawing from reference, right. From models is how do I, how do I use it? Right. 
So, uh, and how do I, how do I, you know, and we go back a few months, we did a whole video on uh, like obligation versus inspiration, right? And I think that's, that's your challenge right now, Michael, is um, how to use reference and to what degree do I need reference? And then finally a full detachment from reference. And when I say full detachment, I don't mean like you shouldn't look up at reference for ideas, but versus like, here's a pose of a model. I'm going to draw this pose of the model, you know? Um, so here, you know, I think where it's getting you is this, the, the lycanthrope side. I don't think you did actually enough reference work on what you're changing the character into. Uh, it needs more definition, like more clarity. It's a little too uh, generic. I would say it's almost too, I know it's like, oh, well, look at, look at the patchwork of colors and stuff and the shaping and all, but it's a little generic in its anatomy. It's hard to tell what it's really like turning into. I don't remember, let me look real quick. I don't remember the write-up that you put in yours. Um, but, and it needs to be drawn better. You know, it needs, I think it just needs more, you know, which again, I know that you're more than capable of. So you wrote a real life Tarzan man found deep in the jungle with the ability to combine animal forms to become the king of the jungle. Yeah, so it's different animals, I guess, right? Personally, I think that's really tough too. And I can't tell what's going on back here. Like there's this dark shape back here. It almost looks like it's part of the tree that's behind him. But then I'm like, maybe it's not. Maybe it's attached to the body. Can't I think really it's his hair. Going on. His what? Oh, his hair. His hair. Mm. Yeah. Yeah, it could be like an extension, right, of it. Mm -hmm. Right, right. Yeah, it's just kind of uh, confusing. Look at the hair here. And I think it's yeah. just they're going out. Longer. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, it's tricky. It's tricky to read it. And it's in, you know, it creates a bad shape against the silhouette of the leg because the leg's buried like perfectly in the edges of that. Mm -hmm. uh, and it's hard to define what the animals are. If it's numerous animals, man, you really got your work cut out for you. You know, I think in really trying to clarify that and make like how human is it or how not is it, you know, how little human is it? More anatomy. I think it needs more anatomy, you know, it just needs more work, you know, more work. All right, let's keep going. Uh, so this one was by, I think it's Ken, I think it's the actual first name, um, Agencyne. Uh, so it's kind of interesting, right? Uh, this is a different take on this lycanthrope idea of having, needing a light source to cast a shadow, right? For this character. Oh, that's cool. I, I just picked up on the whole like moon concept in there too. That's really cool. Um, so, and here she is, you know, walking, uh, howling, right? And she's, she's got this lycanthrope shadow form. Uh, and then this is a special torch that she carries, right? I remember reading like, yeah, you can ignite the tip by striking it on it. It's almost like an old fashioned match, right? Strike it on a surface. So she needs light, you know, in order for this to happen. So here she's not using the matchstick, but she's using a, a fire, campfire. I like how there, you know, you even went and put the time into drawing uh, the belt and how this stuff is held. Um, really good. And then this is such a cool little extra idea of how she can fight along with her Lycanthrope version. Like here, it's actually disarming the guy of his gun in shadow form so she can fight him, right? I think you wrote a thing in here about the the shadow can actually do damage. So in a way, this this guy with the gun is getting double damage from the human form and from the shadow form at the same time, right? So it's really good. Not only is it creative, um, which it is, I love the, the take on it. You, you know, we also get a pretty, even though there's no like clear, full structured, rounded version of the lycanthrope of the werewolf side, uh, there's many different views of it that you can tell were drawn pretty solid, solidly in order to get to these good silhouettes. And it doesn't feel like a regular wolf. It feels like a humanized wolf, which is what I was talking about earlier. So we have that. I love the prop and the you know secondary elements are really great. And I love that you presented us with even more function, like how it works. So you really covered all the bases. And I think you really learned from last week. Last week, you had sent in the guy that was sort of um, actorless, right? Not really performing with the millipede head uh, set. So the skill was there. Um, but there wasn't enough of performance going on here and you added so much and I feel like you really learned, you know, like you took the notes, uh, you came back and you improved, you know, so good job, really good.
you guys want to add anything? I know I kind of talked a lot on that one, but. Yeah, I would say in terms of clarity, this one is, is great. You know, like if I was an art director and you were a concept artist on my team and you send me this, uh, this idea for a character, it's all clear. You know, the skill is there, the creativity is there. And judging from your work from last week, it looks like uh, your style like matches video games. And this would be a great idea to explore in a video game. You know, like just this idea like sparks up like all game mechanics for me to explore, you know? So yeah, awesome work. Yeah, I remember a while ago, there was a game that dealt with shadows. Uh, it's probably going back a good eight to 10 years. And I don't remember the name of it, but it, I don't think it had, you know, Lacanthrope as like, part of that concept you know so it's still you know it's still pretty still pretty fresh idea and it's not like we haven't seen shadows that can attack before but i don't think i've ever seen it as a lycanthrope form and you know and by you of course right and the whole idea of having the stick as a source of light like she'd be in big trouble of course fighting somebody uh, in the dark and she has no lighting or during the day um well during the day i wonder how she does deal with during the day right um is it like as, as soon as she has shadow, you know, the lycanthrope's there. So she walking around like she can't go out during the day because if she does, the shadow is always with her. That might have been an interesting thing to think about. Like maybe it can't be a campfire. Maybe it's only the matchstick. Like it's a certain kind of flame or something that produces the lycanthrope. Yeah, actually, I really like that idea. Maybe this would have had... Um, a moon icon or something on it, right? And it's only the flame of this that does it. So she can live even a normal life, you know, during the day. And this, that means maybe this thing is mystical. Maybe she doesn't need numerous sticks. You know, this is some kind of talisman and something that, you know, is from thousands of years ago and so on and so on, right? But um, yeah, other than that, like I said, I love it. Uh, there's a lot of great stuff going on here. So Murtenje, anything before we move on? Oh, yes, one thing. Uh, can you revert back to the first image? Here, I'll observe uh, right now, you know, just watch your gestures. So she's pushing out on the chest, right? This is uh, the technical part, you know, nothing uh, really else. But, you know, you can look at the werewolf, you know, and werewolf is doing mm. this. That's a good point. So, uh, that would be much more cooler. The, the werewolf would be like pushing out the chest and like howling and like calling the other buddies or something like that. And again, here as well, you know, look how strong the gesture of the woman is, but the werewolf kind of seems weak. So I know it's uh, the shadow again, and you just like stretch the leg out, but you know, look here, like you can, you can have done this and uh, much more like active for the um, active pose for the, the lycanthrope as well. You know? So this yeah, one's pretty point. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I've just observed it. So <laughs> that's mm -hmm. something. But again, I really like the creativity. It's like, it's really unique, you know. I have uh, played this game again with the shadows. It's, uh, it was more like a, I don't know. I, I don't remember the name, but it's more like a go, you know, and playing in a 3D space with like uh, puzzles and everything. And you just have to play sometimes as a shadow and sometimes as a go. Uh, but I have dealt with it. And this would be a very cool, just like Swin Lee's one mentioning is a, uh, this would be a very cool uh, game, you know, if you use it in some. So that would be great. I really love it. All right, um, cool. Yeah. Yeah, so good call. I would agree. I think the human poses were excellent there. You could have brought them over even more seamlessly. That would even have benefited more. Uh, so this is Opal Arrows. Opal Arrows. Um, I love that you have, you know, the beginning and the end. Uh, you mentioned uh, this key note about the hands, right? Or more human-esque. I like that you took the time to call that out. And yet they have the pads of the dog side, right? Which is cool. Um, I'd say a little more on the drawing skill side. And I would say a little more on the creative. It's a little, it's a little generic. I think it needs more clarity, going back to clarity, maybe a little more clarity on the, the wolf end of things. Like what is this? What does his character really, uh, really look like? The styling is almost a little different. It's weird. The, the, the werewolf is almost a little more cartoony than the, the man is, the boy. Uh, and I call that out because of like the eyes, right? See, these eyes are a different style than the eyes uh, on, the, on the guy, right? 
these are um, a, like a degrade, and I don't mean that derogatorily, but a degrade in reality, right? They're more of a cartoon version. So that's an interesting thought. I didn't think of that earlier, but you really want to make sure that the style of the human matches the style, right? It's not like we go from TV animation human to photo real, um, you know, lycanthrope as an example, right? Uh, yeah. Any thoughts from you guys? Uh, yeah, I would agree. Uh, like the drawing uh, or the, the, the skills can, uh, the drawing can use more form basically, you know, like you have some nice shape and even the simplicity of the style, I like it a lot. I can see potential in it. Just remember that shape comes from form. You know, the shapes have to be created by the forms of the characters that you're drawing. Yeah, and you have, I'm reading through your write-up right now. You mentioned this whole idea of a four-leaf clover shaped scar on the hip, which I'm just seeing now. But so it took me to read it to find it, right? So that's not good, right? Like you want to make sure that that's more evident, right? Much more obvious uh, for us. Because you were saying Fort Leaf, uh, Lucky is, so Lucky is a camp director at a campground and his family owned, operated, perfect, uh, protected uh, for several generations. Most of his family's look camp. So I love the write-up. I love all the stuff you're talking about here. Managed to escape with the four leaf shape on his hip, but then he's avoided fighting as much as he can. Spends a lot of time goofing off the neck. Yeah, I think I think I'd make a bigger deal out of this. Maybe it's not just there. Maybe it's like the side of the hip and the thigh, and it's bigger, and more obvious. Maybe it's on the chest, you know, and it's like a very, almost like Superman or something, or like a very clear, specific thing, you know. Um, yeah, and like Swanley said, I think just more, you know, like the hand too. It's not. It's drawn from shape, but it needs more structure to make sure those shapes work better. You know? Anything else, Matunje, before we move on? Um, no, good. Thanks for uh, covering all the aspects. Okay. Here, Matunje, why don't you start on this one? So this is Alan. Yeah. Thanks for taking the efforts to uh, go through this process. I mean, it's really cool to see like how he's transforming like frame by frame. I can almost like imagine uh, like an animation, you know, <laughs> and you are also doing it in the front and the profile shot, you know. So this one, I, I think this is the only one we got where we see to get to see the whole transformation, you know, really, really yeah. good. Uh, yeah, skill wise, I would say, you know, watch over your line quality. I mean, you can be a little bit more loser. I don't know if you have like under, under have done like some under drawings for this and then you have put the on model on top of it. But if this is the only one that you started with and then colored it, then I would say just go more loser, okay? Try to find uh, the characters with more loser lines. This is gonna help you rather than just being very tighter, right? On your strokes. Um, yeah, I, I, yeah, I mean, if you just got the force, I mean, just improve on your skills, you know, more and more. But uh, I really like the idea of like the transforming transformation here. Yeah. Swanling? Uh, not that really. I think that's uh, like the ideas are great, you know, great transformation indeed. It's just the, the skill that needs work, you know, and this shows the importance of, of skill, you know, because the more skilled you are in drawing, the better, clearer you can present your ideas. Yeah. Yeah, I would agree. I think you have your work ahead of you is to learn how to draw better. You know, I think you were spot on with the idea and I love that you went and tried to draw the, the change, right? The, the, the metamorphosis from human again to uh, the werewolf, right? So some good ideas. You just got to, you know, buckle down on drawing, right? Which means, you know, you're going to become even better at this and even more clear because it's already pretty clear with what your current skill level is. So imagine if you drew even better, right? Like, for me, again, I think it's better to have good ideas and not draw well, right? Because you can learn the drawing part. The creative part's a little more challenging to learn. Um, so you just need to buckle down on the drawing, you know, and it'd be interesting to see. You know, let's say next February, we might have uh, this contest again, or maybe even during the holidays. I definitely want to do character design more in the future. So uh, I'd love to see where you end up, you know, going to uh, down the road. All right. Um, Let's see, we're doing okay time-wise. Okay, so this is uh, Gilles, all right. 
Uh, Swanley, how about you start with this one? Uh, this one is some cool ideas. First of all, you know, you're following the assignment, which is to show the two forms so we can see that clearly. You know, and I like that the guy has like the, uh, it's kind of like reminds me a bit of Wolverine, you know, with the, with the hair, uh, like the sideburns and the, and the little beard going on, which uh, connects to the animal. You know, so that's pretty cool. Uh, the werewolf, I think the design is pretty cool. I like that you're using like more angular shapes, you know, sharp, which like adds to the aggressiveness of the character. Uh, on a technical level, just watch the silhouette. Like right now, you have the uh, the arm is right in front of the leg right now. You know, and you, it kind of detracts from the clarity. You know, so the other leg would have would have have to be like maybe sticking out back here or something. You know, just to make for a clear read. But uh, yeah, overall, I would say great great uh, presentation and ideas. Yeah, I love that you used the moon and actually lit the two characters appropriately. I was just looking at their drop shadows and you actually, you know, really used the light source of the moon and their drop shadows are going in different angles. Uh, it's cool. And I would agree. I think, like Swanley said, the, the biggest, one of the biggest issues I see is that silhouette, right? Arm and leg, you know, you could have gotten a much better shape out of it. Uh, and skill is pretty good. I like the I like the character of the the guy in the suit a lot. I like the way he's drawn. I like the style of it. And yet he's like very thin and trim and athletic, you know. And the color, of course, the fact that you brought the color over from the guy to um, to his uh, werewolf version is awesome. Um, yeah, and oh, and the colors you chose. I like this is to me. This is basically a blue and orange painting. Uh, maybe there would have been some way of bringing the orange over. Who knows, right? Right now it's only in his briefcase, but maybe there's some other way of bringing it in, right? Anything else, Mertunje? I really love uh, like how much connection between both of these characters are going on. Obviously, the male is converting to lycanthrope, so you just use the hair and it becomes longer. So it looks very practical, like it could really happen. And uh, if it's uh, two characters like in different rows and they were like mixed up, I would instantly know that, okay, this guy matches up with this creature because it's like so yeah. connected. So yeah, yeah that's really, a good point. Mm -hmm. yeah. I really say just, uh, you know, again, wash over the silhouette because we don't know like what's with the other leg. Maybe it's like half cut out, you know, or maybe you have, uh, maybe that's an orange leg, half orange leg, you know, <laughs> we don't know. So just use the silhouette. Sorry, my bombs are exploding. <laughs> my bombs are exploding here. Uh, all right, so that's it, you know. Yeah, that's good. Let's see. All right, our next one is Dathgram from, from Italy. I love this. Uh, let me see if I could pull up this one and the write-up of it. Feels like you're drawing a Russian but I don't know if I'm wrong. Yeah, you didn't mention here, but it feels Russian to me, I guess, because of the red star. You wrote, what a surprise when I discover my um, anti, uh, what Antico Rossi has turned into a lycanthrope. And oh, there's a beautiful full moon tonight. <laughs> That's very funny. Yeah, it's cool. Uh, I like the feel of this. I like the texture. I like actually that the line here feels grungy, um, it just matches with the look of the character, like the style of the work actually matches the context of the work as well. There's something really cool about that. And uh, even with the werewolf, you know, like here's a full werewolf. I love the close up on the face. I like the expression on the face. I like the pose. I love that. You, I just noticed this. I love that you still see the cigarette on the ground. So that, that's, that's cool, right? That's such a cool little story idea that um, the cigarette is here and after it changes, you can see it on the ground. It's, I don't know if you did this or not, let's see. Yeah, what would have been cool to push this is maybe show that the cigarette is much smaller, you know, to show like the time that has, you know, surpassed uh, during the change, right? The only thing I would love to have seen here is the change, right? I would love to have seen some transformation drawings, uh, but it's pretty damn good, 
Yeah, and I, I love the styling of it along, like I said, how it connects uh, to what you drew, you know. Uh, anything from you, uh, Swenley? Uh, yeah, no, this one you said, this and new, uh, very cool uh, design. And I would say I like the looseness of your line work, you know, and actually even the colors, like it's, it's pretty loose and sketchy, but yet clear, you know, so this shows that you don't have to be like super tight with the presentation of your drawings, you know, this can work as well. Uh, I would just say watch the contrast, like uh, especially with the one with the, uh, with the uh, werewolf, it's just on the edge of being readable. So you want to make sure that, you know, you contrast those values a bit more clearer, you know, so that the character really stands out more from the background. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Martin J. I like how you did uh, the more intense version of the expression on the side. So for example, in the guy version, uh, he's kind of smiling. And then in the expression, he was like really having this like creepy smile. I mean, yeah. I would see this character in a game or like, let's say in a movie, like running towards me, I would just, you know, run away. <laughs> uh, <laughs> so I really yeah, love the scary part of it, you know? Yeah, my, yeah. I, I wouldn't ask him for a cigarette, you know? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah, definitely. <laughs> and uh, yeah, but the werewolf, again, uh, it's just about that contrast, you know? It'd be so much better if uh, the dark background, I know it's like helping with this mysterious look and the creepy look, uh, but there are uh, different ways to do it, right? And uh, because the expression is so good, you know, so we would just like to see more of that instead of, uh, let's say, the background, uh, the darkness in there. But yeah, really great. I uh, really love the, you know, some cool shapes going on, let's say in the legs as well. Uh, the hand looks very dynamic. <laughs> yeah, uh, really good. Uh, it's a very great, great contender for uh, the challenge. Yeah. All right, awesome. This is uh, Rose Animation. So I love the idea here, which I believe you wrote about as well. Let me just grab that. He said, for many people, turning into a werewolf will be a curse for Mariel, a museum curator. It is her wish coming true, been able to use her legs, right? So while examining the new, newly arrived relics, one of them started to glow, scaring her. So she let it drop on the floor and then therefore releasing this ancient power, this wolf spirit. Right. I love the idea here. I got to say, I love that it's somebody who is uh, crippled, right, with especially with walking, right? And by her becoming a werewolf, she's now empowered. It's almost like um, Avatar, right? In Avatar, the film, the guy is a cripple in a wheelchair. And then as a blue character, right, is one of the, uh, I forget what they're called, like the Nami or Nami, Nami maybe. Um, that he's now empowered, right? I think that's an awesome, I think it's an awesome concept, you know? I love the museum curator idea. I love that you put that piece of the puzzle together. I love that you drew the actual amulet. Like there's a lot of great story, a lot of great creativity going on here. A lot of excellent thinking. Um, I think on skill, skill is pretty high. It needs a little bit more work on the force side of things. The pose is a little awkward, like I don't, I guess like what you're trying to accomplish here is the, her being a lycanthrope, being shocked that she can walk. Uh, and, and admittedly, that's a tough, it's kind of a tough moment to convey is the surprise. I would have maybe, my suggestion to you would have been for you to pose this out yourself. Like how would you hold your leg if you were looking down at one of your legs and going, oh my God, it's holding up my weight now. Like I can, I can walk. Um, it just feels a little awkward. I think the pose feels awkward, you know? But I have to say, idea-wise, great function, great too. I think it's really clear. Um, you did the assignment, which is a before and after. Again, I would love to have seen change, you know, happen. Um, I think it's more like the posing of it, you know? And it's a little stiff because it's not, the force aspect, I guess, is the piece that's missing the most for me here, you know? Uh, how about you, Martinje, anything? Uh, it's very unique again, uh, just like that. Uh, I think its name is Ross, like who bring the shadow part, uh, shadow one, and uh, just like uh, as unique as uh, you know his concept. And yeah, again, uh, just watch the fluidity. Let's say in the arms, the arms are like really stiff, you know, just like this. So maybe they could use a little bit more motion in there. Uh, and try it, try it out. You know, we actually suggest you know 
uh, the students on the website, like take the pose yourself and just try to feel the empathy of the model. And uh, maybe you can just act it out yourself and, you know, uh, just imagine yourself in the character and say, when you, let's say walk, <laughs> you can walk and then you say, oh my God, you know, I can walk. And then you can actually try to uh, get to that pose and then maybe try it on on this this one, you know, this lycanthrope here. Uh, watch out again. So the whole pose of the lycanthrope is in the three quarters view, but the, uh, the face is more in the profile shot, you know. So I would just like love to see more of the side. Again, just make sure three fourth is like very uh, dynamic, you know, it has a lot, a lot of information than any other view basically. So yeah, some some technical skills and uh, some technical skills in there. You know? But the idea is great. I, I love the uniqueness of your work. <laughs> Yeah, you know, as I'm drawing here, um, so force-wise, this would have gone from outside, inside, outside. I would have arced this foot this way. Uh, and over here on this leg, it looks like we're looking at the back of the leg, right? Because the knee is turned down and away. And that would have to carry through the, this is the heel and the heel down to the foot, but then the foot is facing this way. So it feels like there's something broken, right? There's a disconnect between the back of the foot and the front of the foot, right? And then the force of the arms to Mertunjay's point, I think this would have added more drama if it had been curved a little bit. And then this would have been a nice rhythm. I like that you got a good silhouette going too. You tried to get the hand out to this negative, you know, negative space. Yeah, a lot of good stuff going on. I think just, you know, watch form like this, uh, this tail and how those hair lines in there would have presented more structure. You know, you can't kind of pick and choose where you're going to have form and not have it. You want to make sure everything is really solid. Forces could be better. Watch the anatomy. Um, but, you know, you're on, a, you're on a good path. you got a lot of skills already under your belt. There's just a couple of things still to work on. But it's pretty damn good. And, again, I think better to have some good ideas, you know. Swanley, so before we move on, anything? Uh, no, I think you guys mentioned all the, like, the main points. You know, cool style. I really like the style a lot. You know, it's the indeed the, the the technical skills that you need to work on. You know, so I noticed one thing that's reoccurred in terms of skill is form. You know, of course, forces as well. But a lot of you guys have good skill in like forces and shapes, but you need that structure in there, guys. Otherwise, it's going to just fall flat. So that's something yeah. that you don't want to skip. You know, in your training. Mm -hmm. Agreed. All right, this is Kozlo's GUI, all right. It's cool. I, I like the presentation here. It seems like because the wolf is lighter in value and not toned in, it's like us being told about his other form, you know, like it's a secondary idea. And yet obviously it's opaque enough for us to, uh, to understand that he does have this other form. So I, I really like that. I wish it had been further away um, or less of it was covered because I can't see this whole leg. So the positioning between the two of them could have been improved, but I like the concept that you're after and how you're trying to present it, you know? Uh, let me get the write-up. What do you think, Swenley? I'm gonna get the write-up while you're doing that. Yeah, ideas are great. You know, here again, scale-wise, I notice some things like it looks like the chest of the guy is here, but yet he seems to be arcing this way. So you want to keep the, the forms consistent, you know, like the whole torso will need to be arcing that way. You know, I have to think about this like a simple cylinder and now the head fits into that, you know, and this arm, seeing like the power in the swing, you know, this arm could have been up here, you know, to like lead our eyes right here. And it's also acting like an arrow pointing to the guy. You know, and the guy could be slightly more forceful, you know, maybe he's carrying a sword, you know, so you could have like placed the sword maybe on his back, you know, just to give him a bit more attitude. So it's not just, you know, just standing there so neutrally, you know, so a bit more uh, like attention to form, uh, actually both force and form and acting with that to make it even more exciting because again, design wise, you have some pretty cool stuff going on here. Yeah, I just grabbed another image from, from this one. I didn't realize you had this in here too, which is pretty cool. 
uh, there was a page on, cause I was thinking, oh, you know, does the tattoo have anything to do with it? Cause it looks like you're carrying across this theme. So he's got this stylized wolf skull that's on the sword, which is really cool. Bone blade since silver is harmful to werewolves. So that's cool. So he's got a blade that he can't get hurt with himself. That's very clever. You got this cursed object, which is what makes him. I guess my only issue functionally with that is it says it's what makes him turn into a werewolf. Like it's not on the guy, but it is on the werewolf side. So how does that work? And why doesn't he just tear the darn thing off his arm? Right. Like there's got to be, you know, my brain's going to try to punch holes in the ideas. Right. And I want you guys to be able to back, you know, or show us like, yeah, that's not what happens. Like I almost imagine, you know, something happens with the sword and it's what releases the werewolf in him. You can almost see the werewolf coming out of his chest. Right. And that's where it starts its transform transformation. And then this guy changes into this werewolf because this giant tattoo you know, and he respects it, of course. So he's got it in his props and such as well. Um, yeah. And I see that you have the full drawing here. So it's cool that the drawing's here. You can see even here, silhouette wise, look at that arm, right? The arm is lined up perfectly with the top of the thigh, right? So that's what you want to be, you know, you want to watch out for. If you fill this in black, just seeing the flat two-dimensional silhouette, just trying to get a clear read across the whole, you know, the whole body. Lots of movement. I got to say, I really like that you did try to get flow in this character. I would agree with Swanley, especially on this guy. He could have been way more dramatic, you know. So it's a good stuff. Lots of skill. Um, clarity could be better. I think creativity, you're on the right path. I feel like there's a couple of unsolved things here. Um, yeah, and like I said, in good skill. It just needs a little bit more of everything. Like if I had to take each bucket and say 10 is the best, I feel like you're like a seven or eight in a majority of buckets, but it's trying to really push all of them, or if not some of them up to that next, you know, up to the next level, you know? Anything you want to close with, uh, Matunjay? Um, I was just about to collect all of, all of those. I mean, I really wish, I really wish this uh, lycanthrope would have like more tattoos over, you know? But then you bring the image and uh, it was like all clear. But again, you know, it's uh, like the tattoos are really cool and uh, the werewolf could actually use it. I, I don't think it requires this like uh, very complex idea of the uh, the sword and everything being cursed. It could just be tattoos, right? And uh, then he cannot remove the tattoos, right? Just as he can do with this skull, the cursed object. Uh, so yeah, that could uh, just simplify the idea to a great extent and uh, that would create yeah. a problem for the character, you know? So if I understand you correctly, the imagine if the tattoo transformed into the skull on the shoulder right so therefore mm -hmm. we've now give the wolf a reason for not being able to remove it right yeah. mm -hmm. so that's yeah, kind yeah. of interesting yeah that the tattoo turns into a real object through transformation yeah that's kind of a cool idea yeah all right and, so uh, some good stuff yeah yeah the the amount of work you know you did uh, very great i uh, know i'm just like observing the the character is like very well drawn you know look even look at the foot foot you know how mm -hmm. great the design of it is mm -hmm. uh but with the werewolf it's uh you know it's just like on a lower side <laughs> uh, maybe it didn't work uh, that much and uh just watch some technicalities so for example uh look at the center of the chest look at the center of the torso but it's like too mm -hmm. far away maybe you know like this yeah, down to the pelvis there. i would say right yeah <laughs> even if you go down from the rib cage to the hips it doesn't feel like we can get to the crotch like it's not explained enough and then that arm is sitting in there in that awkward position right yeah exactly and uh there's like no contrast just like mike mentioned is uh mm -hmm. the two just parallels of the the arm and the the leg here mm -hmm. so even though it uh the silhouette is a little bit like good because this hand is like uh, breaking out of the silhouette but uh Again, it's uh, it could be improved better, right? But I really love the skill. You know, there's a lot of efforts that you put into like the sword and designing the the male. I mean, the character. But it could just uh, put more work into the werewolf and um, just think more about the tattoos and like those kind of stuff because nothing is uh like it, whatever you're putting on the character it should be like used right, right? So <laughs> yeah, just put tattoos on on this guy. Mm -hmm. That would be really cool to see. Yeah, on the note of construction and perspective, for instance, here uh, on the face, we have the eyes going one way and the nose is going the other way, 
right? It's these subtle things that are getting wonky in your work. So it's like, you kind of know structure. You're almost like dangerously no structure because sometimes it's right. Sometimes it's wrong. That's when it becomes most difficult to make sure everything is right. You know? And as Matunja said before, like this center line, what I was trying to mention here was it's hard to get from here to here and understand how that happens. And I wish this arm had just been like here somewhere. Maybe this could have been raised up, you know, to here. And then maybe this arm could have come out over here more, right? And gotten away from like the crotch and all. So we could have seen maybe more of this area, you know? Yeah, it's, it's small stuff. None of it's major, but it's just a little bit of everything, you know? It's very good. You're in an excellent place. I'm sure there's plenty of people that would say, man, I wish I could just get to this place, you know? So you just have a little further to push, but it's really good. It's really, really good. Okay, this is uh, BB Ambrose, right? So this one, I remember in the write-up, this this was a Puma that we were going after. I uh, said, um, say hi to Abby, or Abby, right? Uh, the Mayan warrior Lycanthrope, she's the strongest in the Moonlight Squad, and her animal is the skillful Puma, right? So that's pretty cool. And I remember you had a functional piece here, which was this. So when the moon shows up, right, this obsidian is activated by moonlight and then it kind of moves down the arm and becomes part of the weaponry, right? The claws, they move down into place during transformation. So that's fun. That's a fun little added, uh, uh, added piece, you know, that happens here. All right. You want to start this one, Swenley? Uh, yeah, so the idea is pretty cool, you know, uh, great that you like explain it with the separate drawings. And here again, I would say the main thing that needs a bit of work is the skill to present it. You know, the idea is cool. If you just like level up your drawing skills, man, this, this would have been uh, pretty good. You know, like you have some good stuff. The silhouettes are overall pretty good. I think, you know, if you just move certain things around like maybe put this arm yeah. out here for example would make yeah. it clearer you know this leg you now the character could be like leaning over more you know giving a, like a better sense of motion overall you know and this arm with the shield uh, the shield could have been here for example so when it's in silhouettes everything reads a bit more clearly you know so pretty close no, yeah, little things like the rhythm of the leg. This would be like outside, inside, outside. You know, that starts looking more natural. You have front to back, so this is good. You know, so yeah, idea, pretty good. Just need to work a little bit more on the drawing skills and you'll be an, an amazing uh, a character designer. Yeah, I like the, uh, the cultural piece of this too. We haven't talked about culture very much today and this isn't the first one that's dealt with culture, but... Um... I think adding culture is another layer of information that really helps support a character design. You know, there's, there's all different kinds of stuff that does it. And uh, financial situation of a character is another one, right? That's like a high level concept for a character. Are they rich or are they poor? Are they affluent or not, you know? Uh, and here it's like, you know, and where are they from? And time period, time period is another one, right? So these are sort of like these bigger buckets of information that you can bring in to add the specificity and uniqueness uh, to the character, which makes them deeper and richer, you know, and I, I'm, I feel some of that in this design, which is, I think, really cool. Any last words, Mutunjay, before we move on? Uh, no, good. It's really cultural. You know, that's what the plus point is. Um, yeah, really like that. Yeah. Pretty good. Okay. This was or is N12 Cub, all right? So I like how you set this up with showing us the reference and your sketches. And then obviously she turns into this. Looks like you had a reference here for some kind of character too in this figure. Um, my note here, I would say, is you've got a lot of energy in the poses. And you can see that you're pushing some force shapes in here. It needs more form. I would say more structure to allow the shapes to work better. Like this arm looks really small. And it's because if it's that short, it means that it's going to have a lot of foreshortening to make it that little. But the, there's not enough information in the arm to tell us that it's actually going back in space. I would even say the curve of the sleeve isn't strong enough to, to push that arm back enough to make this arm that small. Right? So there's this challenge of, 
you know, understanding the forces, of course, understanding the shapes that you're getting in those forms and shapes start to move in perspective. And the more they move in perspective, the shorter they get and the less perspective, the longer they are. And, you know, just trying to manage your way uh, through that, you know. Um, what else? And maybe a little bit, I don't know. I was going to say, I, I almost feel like I'm hungry here for a little more uh, information, something richer. Like I like the costume of the girl, at, you know, in the top left. Maybe that's brought over more somehow. Like why are certain parts of the costume here and other parts are not? You know, what does she really look like? It looks like the skirt gets kind of shredded, but that's the one part that probably wouldn't get torn that much at all, right? If anything, maybe the upper body would. Um, yeah, I just think it needs more like thought. And the dog's head is a flat front view, like that's tough. So it doesn't add that much information. Again, for all of you with next week being the last week, um, three quarter view is your best bet, right? Or something close to that to give us two sides of an object instead of a flat front on any part of the body, right? Uh, anything you want to add, Murton Jang? Um, maybe, maybe you can just add more asymmetry. Like, as you can see, the, the ghost pose is just like the mirror image of this like intro pose. You know? mm -hmm. And it's uh, the connection, you know, that we just got to establish. And uh, Again, the center line of the, the lichen slope is like going in a three port position and all, all of a sudden there's like a front view for the face. Yeah. Uh, and, and here too, it doesn't connect down into the hips correctly, right? <laughs> right. And uh, that leg, that stretch leg is uh, turning like in an awkward way towards the inside. Uh, I don't know, it just like uh, looks a little bit awkward. Like um, it seems like the joint is like cracking up a little bit. Uh, yeah, so some technical issues in there. Um, just uh, just fail, follow the basics, you know. It's like the basics are same, but uh, the basics are same, and it's like you just have to kind of make a list or maybe write more. I would say, you know. Uh, so, for example, with the ghost costume, try to bring that over. As you can see, there are like two different references, and uh, you just took the pose, but you didn't transfer the transfer the information that the go actually has. So maybe the skirt, you can bring in the skirt and skirt could be more like torn up, you know, when she's like turning into verbal. Um, so those kind of things. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yep. Okay, I'm gonna move forward for the sake of time here. Um, this is Jason's, right? So I love, I love this clock. You know, I love the arrows going from one image to the next that you put four images together. We talked about changing, so I think Next to the other student that we had or artist that came in that did the two full lineups, I think Jason's is next up for showing us some level of process, right? Um, I wish, if to be picky about it, I wish there was more in between these two steps. It almost feels like this, almost feels like this should go in here. I know you have, yeah, I almost feel like that should go in here. We're going from here to here but I'd still like to see more in here. Nobody, no, out of all the submissions we got, I don't think anyone outside of that one student really went through the process of showing the change, right? And that's probably one of the most exciting things about the lycanthrope, you know? Um, I do like, I'm imagining Jason did this on purpose because it's so specific, but sort of the demureness of this guy who seems like an animal catcher, right? You have animal control here. Uh, with the interned knees and the foot on top of the other foot, sort of introverted, shy kind of person turns into this, this crazy werewolf. Maybe not have the werewolf head on so we could see a little bit more of the body. You know, I like obviously the expression in the werewolf's face is really cool. It's almost a little too real. We were talking about style before, right? Like stylistically, this guy here has a very clear aesthetic that to me does not match the werewolf. The werewolf feels more real and this guy's more stylized. So imagine Jason, how you could bring this aesthetic over to the animal. I feel like you're, and you're, you know, I, I know you pretty well too in your work. Um, I think you've nailed like style down here, but bring it over to the animal. It's like, oh, how do I bring it over to something else besides people, right? So I think crossing that bridge there too. In fact, I think I grabbed close up. I just really like this, this drawing. It's, yeah, it's really fun. You know, I like the change that he's going through. Anything you want to add, Swenling? 
Uh, yeah, so again, scale is pretty good and you learned a lot from our previous feedback, which is great. You know, I would just add, keep in mind that this character design and not illustration when picking the camera angles, you know, because if this was for a game, for example, some 3D artists are so skilled, all they need is a three quarter view and they can create a model out of it. But if they, if you give them like a flat front view, they don't have enough information to work with. Same with animation, you know, we want to be able to see more, like enough information about the design to understand how it works three dimensionally. So that would be my one note. Mm -hmm. Okay. Anything more, Tanjay? Yeah. Uh, the wolf lost its identity. Like, really, I mean, uh, it has uh, like how that uh, great, like this human, like really beast, you know, and turning and it's, it's turning into a very real wolf. You know, that's what Mike is telling me. And uh, you almost like got, uh, yeah. I mean, expression is cool. He looks very fearful and like hunter, you know, but. Again, you know, what is the proportion of his body and like what are the characteristics of the person that you're transforming to the wolf? You know, that's what the thing is. Uh, again, it's great, great rendering and uh, great like that transforming. But is that last piece, you know, that's kind of a little bit could be improved. And uh, yeah. Okay. All right, last two, and then we pick our winner. Um, so we have this piece by uh, Lazy Goblin, right? Pretty good. You have this whole. Uh, this priest here, and I remember reading about this uh, pendant or amulet is what helps the character change. I like that we have a really clear before and after. I'm not sure I really understand um, the use of this, something fur on all, right? Covered and everything. So just that his whole body does change, right? And you wrote it, normal Bible or is it, right? So kind of interesting, we don't know what's really going on with this guy, but. Skill-wise, really good. Silhouettes, very clear. Um, it would have been interesting maybe if there was a little bit more of something coming over from the guy to here. Like, can we tell, right? How can we tell if this guy is this guy? It looks like, mm, it's hard to tell if that's teeth or if that's the scratches on the guy's cheek. And if so, then that's, that's a good step in the right direction. You know, like trying to pull over those scars to, to his face as well, all right? Yeah, I would say all in all, it's it's pretty good. I, I again, the one thing I wish was here was the uh, the metamorphosis. You know, uh, anything from you guys, Swinley? Uh, no, I agree. This is pretty good. You know, pretty clear, straightforward. Great job on on the wolf. Very aggressive and good combination of uh, force, form, and shape in there. You know, that's like a little bit of an anime vibe, which is great. You know, style wise. So uh, overall, great work. Mm -hmm. Uh, no, except uh, this uh, uh, this work actually reminds me of Scott Planters, you know. <laughs> I don't know if he's like doing all of these kind of things. Uh, but yeah, really cool, you know, just to uh, bring some more like of a priest characteristics to the wolf and it's a very great contender, you know, I would say. Mm -hmm. Very strong. All right, good work. Uh, last but not least, Saharain's art, right? Really fun character design. So we have our before and our after here. Uh, let's see if I can move this guy over like so. Um, I wish there was more info in the werewolf side. I just noticed that your piece, that's cool. I was gonna say, it'd be nice to carry more over. Uh, you know, you have a little bit of color and you have the ear. Uh, and I wish the werewolf was posed better he's kind of looks evil as heck but he's just kind of hanging out almost in the same pose as the character um so i don't know maybe you're purposely trying to go after the humor of that but i think i would have tried to add more drama to the posing there uh let's see if you wrote anything we'll take down the double one i see which one gets used this is dewey lacoop zoology student by day cursed to roam the streets as a werewolf vigilante hunter by the light of the full moon <laughs> Yeah, it's cool. Uh, it's a little, the, as a subtle note, the dark green is a little dark compared to the values of the werewolf side. I wish it was just a touch brighter because this contrast is much higher, easy to see. I would have lightened up the background more to see the wolf better, the werewolf better, you know. Um, and again, as always, I wish there was change, you know. 
anything from you guys before we finish up? I would agree the werewolf, like the guy seems like you put a lot of work in him. Like he's cool if you can bring the werewolf to the same level of, you know, of attention, especially since it's about the lycanthrope. You know, I think this would be great, you know, so different posing. You know, like the head is pretty well drawn, you know, good combo mm -hmm. force and shape there. It's just the, the overall posing needs a bit more work. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, uh, yeah, uh, the guy, he seems like really goofy, you know, <laughs> he's like kind of more of a, like the guy who doesn't have like friends and something like that, you know, with glasses on. So it'd be very funny to see this like like and throw within the same uh, why with that character. You know, it would be super awesome. It will be very very unique. You know, and again, I would so just either say, either one would have been great, right? Like either really make okay. the werewolf sort of goofy and studious, like the kid, which could have been funny, or the exact opposite, right? Like this goofy kid turns into you know the the football quarterback, right? And he's like huge and monstrous and super masculine aggressive you know right like push the contrast really far and kill everyone yeah. who's uh bullying them who's bullying him <laughs> yeah it's a really good point because to me i think with the werewolf side i just have a hard it's harder to read i think that's that's the clarity piece like i'm not really sure where to go with the werewolf it's not giving me any kind of vibe clearly where the character design on the human side is very good you know all right. So that's everyone. So first of all, again, thank you everyone for submitting your uh, work. Hopefully we were able to share some um, insightful um, advice with you guys. Um, our top three were The Shadow Lycanthrope by Ken, Daft Graham's uh, Russian uh, Werewolf, right? Really awesome. And last but not least is Lazy Goblin's um, priest right the priest to the uh to the werewolf so really really good work again i love how difficult you guys are making this for us uh today's prize is force form and shape right so all three of those courses lifetime access um and there's hundreds of videos obviously at that point and that means you're basically getting all the videos that are in the force basics uh book um at this point right which is a pretty awesome prize so our winner, drum roll is Ken, right? Uh, Swenley and Rotunji and I talked about this obviously before we come on. And uh, I think we were all really just enamored with skill, uh, clarity, um, creativity, right? The creative aspect of this, the functionality of it and how you took this assignment and really ran with it. And I would like to add, I think we were all really impressed with the fact that you submitted last week. You were in top three last week. Uh, you came up with a great design with the guy with the millipede head and all, and you took our notes, you know? So, and we're aware of that, you know? So it's really awesome to see that you improved and you really pushed into the aspect of not having the acting in the other one. And here you went to the other side, right? Like you pushed in so much acting, so much different posing and, you know, having that across not only the female, but also the, you know, the shadow. And just what you did with these other story moments, right? So these, it's just so much better, like so much better than what you submitted last week. Your skills there, now you're really showing us that, you know what, you can be a storyteller as well with these characters and you're thinking functionally. So congratulations, excellent, excellent work. Anything you guys wanna add? Uh, congrats and subscribe. <laughs> yeah, good job. Yeah, great job indeed and excited for uh, next week our grand finale yeah yeah so next week everyone without giving away what it is there will be three characters um the goal is going to be contrast and affinity so we want to see how they are the same and how they are different okay that is like the one of the main focuses for next week's challenge since you're here i'm giving you this little insight right? That's what you're trying to balance out. Do you lead more towards the contrast to them or towards the infinity? You're trying to hit the balance. What does that look like? Did you do a good job of clarifying it based on what the subject matter is, right? And next week will be a bigger prize, okay? So bigger prize, three character designs, and be aware of the contrast and affinity rule, okay? What that means is what is different and what is the same, right, across these three characters that you'll be drawing, okay? So thank you, everyone. That. 
yeah. I, I think for next week, like there is no specific genre, right? It could be any genre, which makes um, it even I'd better. have to look. Yeah, I'd have to look at that uh, as to what we uh, what we did here. I don't have that right in front of me right now. I mm -hmm. think it does pick a certain subject matter from what I think I remember. Yeah. Um, but remember, time period, something you could play with, right? Um, sex is something you can play with. Time period is something you can play with. You'll see. I don't want to give away too much, but... Like I said, make sure the contrast and affinity that piece is there, okay? All right, guys, have a great weekend. Enjoy drawing for tomorrow's contest. It'll show up on our Instagrams uh, tomorrow morning. And uh, we will see you next Friday for the last uh, character design assignment. And then we're going to go back into our routine, all right? All right, take care, everyone. Thank you, Swanley and Matunjay, for all your insight. And we'll see you guys next week. Bye-bye. Take care. Bye. Take care. See you guys. Bye-bye. See ya.